Hello, uh, my name is Yamane Kalata from Nagaoka University of Technology and today I'm going to present uh, this paper, Simple Semi-Supervised Part of Speech Tagging, which was published at the Proceedings of NACL in 2015, just last year. So in this presentation, uh, first I'm going to talk about the overview of the paper and then uh, introduction and the motivation of the authors to start this uh, research. Then we're going to see the methods that they have used in their research. Uh, next is the experiments and results, and then we'll conclude with some remarks. So the overview, the, pur the purpose of uh, the research was to reduce the level of supervision, or in other words, the amount of training data that is required to achieve the state-of-the-art part of speech accuracy that we see these days. So their, their motivation is uh, part of speech tags are almost deterministic. Um, well, previously uh, in the other statistic st statistical methods, uh, it's assumed that part of speech tags are ambiguous. So the, the special thing or the uh, interesting thing that these authors started with is that most of the part of speech tags are deterministic. And another key point in this paper is uh, the Brown model of word clustering uh, reveals the underlying part of speech tag information of words. We're going to see this in detail. So their method is a discriminative classifier um, joined with active learning and their result, uh, the, the uh, reported a tagging accuracy of 93% with just 400 leveled words and a tagging accuracy of 97.03% uh, with just less than 1% of the original training data uh, in case of English data set. So uh, as I have uh, said, um, well part of speech tagging is leveling of words. Um, and uh, with their uh, associate with their appropriate part of speech such as verbs and nouns and uh, they might be supervised unsupervised or maybe in between uh, semi-supervised learning approach so uh, so far in the fully supervised part of speech tagging uh, it is m largely considered as a solved problem because we have uh, very efficient and high performance part of speech taggers which are based on data but this is not the case for unsupervised part of speech tagging and uh, in their previous in the previous workers the authors note that the methods that were that that exist for unsupervised tagging uh, are complicated because of uh, varying assumptions and unclear evaluation matrices and also they are not yet matured and they are not going they, they are not still being used for practical purpose because the accuracy is very low so coming back to the motivation uh, we know that some part of speech some words are ambiguous for example the example given here is set it can be a verb or it can be a noun uh, but uh, some of the other, the words are also deterministic meaning they have always the same part of speech tag. For example, the word the is always a determiner. So if we see the deterministic mapping that maps uh, words into tags, uh, they try to um, see uh, what is the, 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 the rate of words to be ambiguous or to be uh, deterministic, which, which words, which behavior is more uh, existing in, in words. So this is a simple function, argmax, which counts the words which are tagged as specific part of speech tag. So in this simple construct, the accuracy for coarse tags was 88.5%, and for fine grained tags, it was 92.2%. So this somehow, this simple assumption shows that most of the words are deterministic in nature. So they constructed a simple model uh, of restricted uh, hidden Markov model, which considers only the first order sequence structure. The second motivation is uh, 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 this research uh, Brown et al. model. Uh, th this model tries to uh, derive uh, word representations or lexical representations. 
uh, and the application of this model was to cluster words according to their types. So as we can see from here, uh, this is a binary representation of words and uh, we see here that words which are which have some kind of semantic relationship are grouped together. For example, community and industry, uh, Google and Microsoft, set and kept, at and from. So they have some kind of semantic relationships, but in addition to this kind of semantic relationships, the, the authors also identified that there is some hidden relationships with regards to part of speech tagging also by using this lexical representation. So this is the bit string representation and uh, this can be recovered into the real valid representation. So they used uh, a, a method called canonical correlation analysis a variant of that analysis was used to recover the bit string representations into real valid uh, words. So we can see that the words that are related uh, lie on, on, on similar coordinates, on similar vector space. So this community and industry words, uh, Google and Microsoft, although these are all nouns, but we can see that Google and Microsoft are proper nouns, so they are aligned together. And here these are verbs, and uh, these, these are prepositions. So this lexical representation method also, uh, there is inherited, there is, uh, there is um, uh, this part of speech tags information is also somewhat available, this hair hidden. And uh, what's more interesting is this type of representation can also represent ambiguity. Because as when, if we take the, the word set, it can be a noun or it can be a verb and in this coordinate axis it lies between nouns and verbs so this we can see this distance from nouns and from the verbs so this this could this is uh, a, a a hint that uh, this can also represent ambiguity not only the, the deterministic uh, nature but also some some ambiguity is going to be represented by this kind of representation so these are the two motivations of the paper and they constructed this uh, mini tagger framework. Uh, it uses an existing discriminative classifier to map words context to part of speech tag. So any discriminative classifier, uh, discriminative classifier such as SVM can be used at the first. Uh, and then by allowing learning from partially labeled sentences or a huge um, text which is an annotated text and using active learning to label uh, the database, uh, taking samples of words which have least confidence in their part of speech tags, they allow partial this. Uh, they allow to extract partial partially labeled words, and then they, they label them by using some method. And uh, this con this construct was proved to be uh, very fast and efficient, and uh, it has the um, advantage of adding arbitrary features to these to their algorithms so if we uh, see the features they use it uh, well the common features like identities of uh, words which are before and after the for the, the the current word or the focus word and prefixes and suffixes of length for and some other features like whether the, the word is capitalized or numeric or non -alpha, non alpha numeric and in addition to these uh, common features, they also uh, ex they also use this bit string uh, features from the Brown model, and also the uh, m-dimensional uh, CCA embedding of words, the word representation of words, which is uh, a product of the CCA TCA algorithm. So these are the features as we see here, and uh, the baseline was considered to be the spelling, uh, the, the, the word, or the spelling of the, the words. So, the sampling methods, or the methods that they applied in order to select candidate words for labeling during active learning. Uh, we have active learning as a sampling method and also random and frequent word sampling. So, in active learning, what happens is they try to find out the most informative word for labeling. So the most informative word could be the word which, which has the least confidence score 
when it is tagged or when when the, when it, when the tag is predicted for that word. So that could be the most informative word to be labeled. Um, and they just applied a method called simple marg uh, simple margin sampling for uh, doing this kind of analysis. And other, in addition to active learning, they also used a random and frequent word sampling. So random sampling just selects m words uniformly, and uh, frequent word sampling, uh, they first select the frequent words, and then from these frequent words, they said they just select randomly some values. So these are the sampling methods. So I have tried to summarize the process flow as follows. So let's assume that this SVM model is uh, pre-trained by using uh, field training data. It is pre-trained and uh, um, so there is a large pool of text which has to be labeled. The main purpose of this research is to reduce the uh, training data requirements by using their constructs. So there is unlabeled data and we have an SVM uh, tagger which is trained, pre-trained from a small data. So as I have said, uh, from these words, features are going to be extracted. So the common features that we always use, and uh, in addition to with the lexical representation, this lexical representation of uh, features are the main uh, key pointers that improved the um, accuracy of the system. So the uh, SVM tagger is going to select uh, this going to extra we, we extract features and then we use this uh, SV they use this SVM uh, model to tag and from the result they find the least confidence prediction from this lizard result of the uh, SVM tagger and then uh, by using this uh, by they, they select uh, the least condition this the least confident prediction by using the sampling methods and then by using active labeling they level that word and it becomes part of the training uh, data again. So this the SVM model will be more, uh, more, more. It will it will perform more when the, there is more uh, training data. So this is more or less the flow of the research. Now, if it's, if we see the experiments in the settings, they use three languages: English, German, and Spanish, and they use a data set from the Universal tree bank. They experiment with a large tag set of 45 tags and also a reduced tag of 12 tags. And for this, uh, the, the large, uh, well, the size of the data is for English, it is 772 million words. So, and for Japanese and uh, for German and Spanish, uh, they use the Google Engram, which is 64 billion words for German and uh, 83 billion words for uh, Spanish. So the uh, resource that they have used, the annotated resource, is quite huge. And they use the bit string derivation of uh, Liang, uh, according to the Liang method and Stratos method. And uh, word embeddings were, uh, they use, they derived 550, uh, 50, 550 dimensional word embedding from the CCA algorithm of Stratos et al. So they finally compared their results with the CERF method of tagging. This is a sample result of the word embedding. So uh, the the first the first column uh, is uh, the relationship between communities and uh, companies, but also these uh, these words are nouns and and so on. So verbs, adjectives, uh, I think uh, this is ADP, I am not sure what this ADP is, but adjectives, adverbs, and numbers. So this is a sample, um, a sample result of the word embedding technique. So by using this kind of relationship as a feature added to these, with the common features, they were able to boost the performance of their taggers. So the, the first experiment is with limited training data. And uh, as we can see here, the sampling, feature, the sampling uh, they used the um, random sampling, the frequent word uh, sampling, and active sampling. So these are the bases. And 
the features are uh, the, with the basic the basic features and the bit strings and also the CCA word embedding features. So maybe we can see clearly how the uh, uh, the performance improved from this graph because here uh, these these lines represent the random frequent word um, methods. Here we have the active sampling method with the baseline features, the active sampling method with the bit string features and the active sampling method with CCA features. So this this uh, here is um, the active um, learning with the baseline features. So, so so they started with 100 words, 100 words, 200, 300, and so on. So these are quite few number of words. The, the uh, initial result was around 50 something here by using the baseline, but then it's uh, the 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 the, the, um, the the accuracy boosted with high numbers from 50 up to the early 80s here, and then it increased into the 90s just by using 400 words. We see it at the uh, early 90s here. So they, there is a huge or a substantial uh, improvement by using just a few number of words and using this by uh, bit string features and also this CCA features. So this is the main uh, uh, key point in, in this research. So if we, we can see the details of the results here, um, just by using 200 words, the result was 74.52, and then we see here the result is around eight, around 90 percent. So this is the effect with limited uh, training data. The effect of brown representation is with limited training data. And the next experiment was to evaluate the minimum size which is required to achieve the fully supervised baseline. So when, when they use fully supervised uh, approach, and compare it to the minimum number of words or the minimum size that is required to achieve that level of accuracy, this is uh, the result. So generally, this is the, um, the percentage of the data which is uh, compare, compared to the original size. So uh, this is 5%. So just by using less than 5% of the data, but by using the less than 5% of the data, they were able to match the target accuracy here. So the target accuracy is around, for, for example, for the English data set having 12 um, tag sets, it was 97%. So for, by using this, uh, the fully supervised method, the highest accuracy was 97%. And by uh, using only 7,000 words by, and using these CCA features, they were able to match that kind of accuracy. So if we, see here 97% um, accuracy with less than 1% of the data. So if this is 1% of the data, 7K, then the 100% of the data, all the full data would be 700K. So we can imagine the uh, improvement by using, this, by using their methods. Uh, so by just using 7K data and compare to this fully supervised 700 uh, K data, they were able to uh, achieve very accurate results uh, by their methods. So this is the comparison with CRF. Um, the default features were used for CRF algorithm. And as we see here, almost the results are very similar. And in some cases, the the cc uh, the the features of cca with all the data sets also outperform the crf method so uh, it's it's very impressive result uh, because they were able to achieve very uh, high results by using just uh, very low uh, training uh, data so in conclusion, the research showed that the Brown model, which is often used for deriving lexical representations, uh, is also uh, useful for capturing part of speech tags. And they reduced the amount of labeled data required for the state-of-the-art part of speech tagging. And they obtained an accurate part of 
uh, tagger, which can be used for practical purpose, with less than 1% of the normally considered amount of training data for supervised methods. So that brings us to the end of today's presentation. Thank you for your attention.